Nikita Koloff, the Russian nightmare, no, the devil's nightmare here from It's Time to Man Up. Challenging men to step into their true manhood. Your chosen Truth Network podcast is starting in just a few seconds. Enjoy it, share it, but most of all, thank you for listening to the Truth Podcast Network. This is the Truth Network. The heart of every man craves a great adventure, but life doesn't usually feel that way. Jesus speaks of narrow gates and wide roads, but the masculine journey is filled with many twists and turns. So how do we keep from losing heart while trying to find the good way when life feels more like a losing battle than something worth dying for? Grab your gear and come on a quest with your band of brothers who will serve as the guides in what we call the masculine journey. The masculine journey starts here now. How fun today on the Masculine Journey. We're doing a little something different. Sam is away, so the mice are playing. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and so we decided, well, well, let's do a little format change here this week is we're going to have the boot camp survivor stories, okay? And we have invited out many of our boot camp survivors to share, you know, how they survived this event, which, by the way, there's another one coming up, shameless plug, on November 17th. <laughs> and you're saying, gee, I'm not a boot camp survivor. That's a problem we can solve for you <laughs> by you going to maskandjourney.org, just saying, and, and making that happen, right, Andy? Absolutely, yeah. So, you know, we really have just, what a treat, I mean, for me mm -hmm. and for everybody in the room because there's something that happens at boot camp that really I don't know that ever happened to me in my life, that I had f formed bonds with men that have impacted my life continually forever. A and, of course, when you form a bond with one like Ricky Korn, you know, you, you know you've got a tiger by the tail right there because, as he will tell you, he's seen some things. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so, you know, we'll just start off with you, Ricky. So, you know, for you, you've been to what, five boot camps now? Yes, sir. Been to five boot camps. Yes, sir. And so you're headed into your sixth. I'm headed into my sixth. And I, know. I honestly don't know of anybody that's more excited to attend their sixth boot camp than Ricky Corn. Mm -hmm. I can honestly say that. And I've talked to you, <laughs> you know, numerous times, which is always a joy. But, you know, share with somebody listening that maybe never came. Like, well, I know everybody that knows you. You've, you know, you've you've got them on the list of you know ten most wanted to come to boot camp. But what what do you share with your friends? Like, man, you got to come. Well, I always tell them the good thing because that's all is there is good things, and it's a and uh, it is a tight bond of men. Everybody's the same, and each and every time that I've come to boot camp, Robbie, I've learned something different and. Not one man, not one person that's ever been there neglects not to take time out to talk or to share. But I always tell them that everybody's the same. And if you just come one time, just come once. It's a self-experience like you already explained. Yeah, that's kind of cool. You, you, it, you told me today on the phone, you said, I've never seen a guy there in a suit and tie. No, <laughs> we're all the same. It, 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 it is. It, it, it's serious business because of the relationship that can come out of it to God, but mo but mainly the bond of men. They're all there for the same thing, and the and it and the real thing in life, and that is. To get down with the business with the good Lord, because we're not here, left here by mistake. We got, we're all, we are on the journey, Rob. You're right. All of you are right. And if we miss out on it, then that might not be a good thing. Because, and you're right about this. We are wanted. Everybody on this earth is either wanted. We're either wanted alive or we're wanted dead. And if we're wanted alive, that's pertaining to God and Jesus Christ. There you go. And, and that's, that's, part, uh, yeah. And the death part reflects back to the flu foot because he's to seek, 
still destroy, rob, and lie, and etc. And once again, nobody's been to camp. You need to come one time and break bread with the men and fellowship. Feel the atmosphere. Hear the people pray and get down to earth about what's going on in life and get real. Isn't that cool? That's it, really and really. truly helped me out and changed a lot of things in my life. And so, like, man, I'm so blessed to have such a friend. Everybody ought to have a friend like Ricky Corn. I'm just saying. And if you do happen to come and be a survivor of the next boot camp, I will assure you, you will have a new friend named Ricky Corn. <laughs> he, he gave my brother a rock, man. And my brother, I, I rarely talk to my brother. He doesn't make reference to Ricky Corn and the rock. But Dwayne, you've been, how many boot camps? You probably. Seven or eight? Yeah, you know, I, I, I've been coming regularly, and it's, it's just such a blessing. You know, and you guys call it survival mode, <laughs> but, I, but you know, it was refreshing. It, it was something that took me out of uh, survival mode and gave me, like, a peace of mind, you know? Because, first of all, let's understand something. When you guys invited me, I was at—it was like the worst time of my Christian walk. I was going through some things. The first time I came, I don't know if you remember, I was—, I was Walking on a two way, I, I, yeah, you know, I couldn't even walk. I couldn't even stand up straight. And, uh, you know, I'm walking now. I, I, I ain't running around a lake yet, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you guys, you know, it's, it was just such a blessing. For, first of all, just to be in the presence of men that didn't have anything to gain from me being there. It was just like, here, here we are. Come on in. <laughs> and, and, and it was such a blessing. Life, life, life turned friends, you know. Yeah. And uh, the brotherhood, you know, I was reminded of the movie, uh, The Band of Brothers. Right. You know, and it was just like, you know, you, you can't get away from that, that bond. So now you guys, you know, and what you guys do and the, the teachings, it, it, it woke me up to a lot of, a lot of things. And how I, uh, in my lowest state as being a Christian, never walked away from the Lord, but I was just like, I'm just tired. At that state. You guys showed me that, hey, Dwayne, you need to pull that mask off, you know? And I was hiding things under, I was, you know, oh, yeah. No, sometimes it's good just to say, man, this, this is hard, Lord. <laughs> it is. You know? And you guys just banded together and brought me up. And, yeah, you know, I, I, I look forward to them. And um, just the fellowship. I, I recall so many memories. And, and the greatest things is just being around a group of men that love the Lord and sharing his kindness and his love. Uh, all of you guys, I, I didn't sat and talk with all of you guys, different occasions, different conversations, and it's all been unique and, and refreshing. See, so you guys took me out of survival mode because I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do, Lord. <laughs> and you, awesome. you guys gave me a whole different perspective in life. And, and you know, you can't, you, can't, you can't hide that. You can't hide, you can't hide the true, genuine love of, of God. You can't hide it. <laughs> no, when you've been in his presence, you know, you get this glow, right? And, and what's cool, you know, and I'm sure you, we also got Rob Broom with us. And so, Rob, you, you know what several of the guys mentioned tonight as we were talking about what the show is going to be about is, like, you got to find out you're not in this, you're not the only one that struggled with all this crazy stuff, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it was a lot of... Um, a, a, a lot of a lot of personal struggles, and you know what I and um, you know the first one I didn't I had no clue what was what I was going in what I was walking into, and then afterwards, you know like I you know realizing that other people are in the same are in the same boat, and you know how open everybody was to share their struggles, um, it kind of helped you know make it seem like oh yeah it's a great you know it, it was it was a great group. And a lot of um, a lot of unpacking was able to be done. Yeah, and one of the cool things <clears throat> for those who don't know Rob's story a little bit um, <clears throat> is Rob came back with his dad, right? Um, and his dad, you're you're in your dad's relationship uh, was a little different than some people's relationship with their dad. But you know, we talk a lot about you know the importance of that father son relationship, and so. How cool was it 
because Rob got baptized at the last boot camp with his dad in the lake. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, oh, boy. Yeah, that's right, Ricky. I mean, ain't none, none of us that were there are ever going to forget that moment. Oh, no. That was for real. That was special. Real special. And I'm sure you've seen the video of it, Rob, but the hug between you and your dad when you came out of the water was something I, you know, was in my soul will never, ever go away, man. Yeah, it was, a, it was definitely um, a hug that I'll remember and just, I, and, I, and I won't forget, you know, getting out of, you know, getting out of the water. Special, you know, uh, at first, you know, the special, um, you know, time with, with you and, you know, Josh, my brother-in-law, um, you know, that was special, but, you know, getting, you know, getting out of the lake and my dad being there, I mean, and we were getting ready on for our seven hour drive back home. I mean, I'm giving him a hug while with lake water. And, <laughs> Cold lake <laughs> you know, water, I, by the that way. That wasn't lake water. That was pond water. <laughs> That's what we call them down here in the South. Whatever, lake, whatever, pond water, lake water. It's water. It was okay. cold water. I can tell you that's what it, what it was. Cold water. There was there was fish and tadpoles. That while I was yeah, there too. Pond water. You're getting them out of your pockets later. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it, it, it really phenomenal to me. Again, the idea. I love what what Harold, you know, gave us this idea. Well, I'll let you, Harold. You tell us. Yeah, it was your idea. You know, you you survived real boot camp when you were in Air Force. So, you know, I guess boot camp survivor meant something to you. Well, to those guys that went through the Army or the even the Marine Corps boot camp, they would laugh in my face to, to say that I was a survivor because what I went through was sort of like advanced Boy Scouts. But nonetheless, I think uh, of surviving boot camp and, of course, uh, that's just a play on words, more or less, because what we have at our boot camp is not something you have to survive. It's something that makes you stronger and gives you the strength to go on your regular walk with God. Hopefully it's something that will make you be bigger than you were when you got there. So, Danny, I, I always know you have, you know, it's the first segment. We're not playing your clip. <laughs> But our listeners are expecting, you know, some Danny insight. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I'm still a little salty about the no clip kind of thing. You know, um, some of us are boot camp prisoners of war, I think. So uh, I just came and never went away. So, um, but, uh, you know, it, it, it's awesome to have the band of brothers and to live out, you know, what you love to talk about, so to speak. And, you know, so we have a lot of fun but we're serious about what we do and you know just to meet all these other guys and i have a friend named ricky corn too so yeah yeah and and i got one named rob broom we got one named terry that oh i got to go steelhead fishing with we're gonna talk about talk to terry when we get back so much more masculine journey coming up one of my favorite things about boot camp well the favorite thing about boot camp is every time i go i encounter god and as anyone that has encountered god knows generally speaking it's nothing we expect real encounter with god out of the blue he knew what i needed I knew what I wanted, and those two were rarely the same thing. Register today at MasculineJourney.org. For me, describing boot camp, when I heard the stories from the stage that the other men had, and then during my prayer time, I'm getting a download from God on where my life is and how I have wounds and I have a place in his story. To know how I heard from God is one of those things. He really does communicate with us. Register today at MasculineJourney.org. Oh, for those of us who've been to boot camp, we love that song as it's very much connected to the new name talk that we do at boot camp. And so we got this 
very special show. And in, in Sam's absence, we definitely miss Sam because he's such a huge part of the show. But today's show, Boot Camp Survivors, you know, and, and, and as you think about Remind Me Who I Am, you know, many, many times we've been told that, you know, we're, that a, a man come and they really don't have many friends or they don't have any friends that they can get real with or they don't have lifetime friends or whatever the situation may be. You know, our, our hope is, our dream is that obviously they would have God as a friend like they've never had before and God as a father as they've never had before. But also where that leads is to, you know, deep friendships that like I know that everyone in this room is totally excited to be back together again with the, with the, with the group that's coming. And, and so I know you feel that way too, Ricky. And I know you feel that way, Danny, right? Oh, absolutely. Right. And, and so we got now Terry who Terry, you know, I just got to go on an adventure to Ohio steelhead fishing with Terry and big Jim. And so Terry, you know, you, we've had you on hold as you got to hear all this, but you know, for you, um, how did uh, God remind you who you were at boot camp? Oh, in so many, so many different ways. Um, from beginning to end, you you better expect God to show up because He's going to show up. If you give Him the time, um, He's going to show up big at this boot camp, and uh, it's so important to me that I'm going to drive 550 miles get there so. that's true <laughs> and I, I know that trip and it's <laughs> it's rough it's rough but but you know uh, how exciting is it to be with people that you really really love i mean that that well, you really really feel like like heaven's gonna feel to be in the presence of people that are real right yeah it's hard to come behind ricky corn and these guys <laughs> and add much to what they said because they pretty much nailed it on the head you know, um, Ricky, he just makes the, he makes everybody laugh. How can you, you know, you can spend three days laughing with your brothers and fishing and shooting. Uh, it don't get no better than that. And then you're given time to, uh, spend time with God and he will come, he will talk to you. And, uh, just amazing experience all the way around with the brothers, the friends, the the things that you're taught and the things that you you think about. Um, a lot of the things that you guys bring up, you don't think about on a daily basis. So um, it's really, you know, it showed me some things about myself and about others and friends and brothers. And, you know, I can call you guys at any time. And you're going to be there for me. And I know that. And I thank God for it. I just so look forward to being there. Terry and I were at that place before he left and before the first boot camp. Um, he's a, a great friend. And uh, he and Robbie taught me the beginnings of becoming a fisherman here recently, and uh, Ter Terry was trying to turn me into a man that was handy around the house, and considering what he had to work with, he did an outstanding job. I wanted to let you know, Terry, that I've changed my first inner tube in 55 years, probably, wow. <laughs> yesterday, and I got the wheelbarrow fixed, which wow. has been flat for two months. So I'll share this story because it just shows to me, you know, like how important a band of brothers is. So we did go steelhead fishing, Big Jim and me. And if you've ever watched a river runs through it and you see that scene where the guy's going down the waterfall with a big, huge fish, that's a steelhead. OK, and that's real. That's completely real. And those fish fight just as hard as they look like they would fight. And so I shared with those guys the last day I was there at lunch how I had struggled because my dream was to, number one, catch one of those fish on a fly rod, and number two, to do it while communing with God at the same time. But every time I'd start to catch one of those fish, they fought so hard, God went out the window, and it was just me and the fish. And then I'd have the fish, and then I felt all low because I didn't get a chance to 
have God in the communing process while I was actually catching the fish. So it wasn't an hour after I shared that with my band of brothers, i.e. Jim and Terry, that, that Terry was within you know 30 yards of me when I hooked the first ever steelhead on a fly rod. And, and off he ran like a river runs through it, down the river like he was. I thought I was going to have to go jump some waterfalls here pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> and the second that I hooked that fish, my brother, Terry, is, oh, Lord, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that guy. <laughs> and as soon as he did that, I went, oh, ka-ching, <laughs> right? And, and, yeah. and that little prompting that he, that was all I needed. See, I, I couldn't do it on my own. I would like to think I could do it on my own, but I couldn't do it on my own. But, and so right in that moment, when I, my dream was made a reality because my brother stepped in the, in, into the gap, in the gap of my you know, whatever mm -hmm. ability to call on God. And there he was. And by the way, you know, Terry, you were there throughout the trip to intercede for us and, and to bring us into the presence of the Lord, you know, throughout that. And that, and those are my favorite memories of that, awesome. of that adventure, because you know, what good is an adventure like that? If it, God is no longer for the ride, right. Yeah. Uh, you know, if anybody's taught us that it's Andy. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, th that was so cool to hear that you guys had that experience and, and I think uh, that's something I think we wanted to try to do more even beyond boot camp. We try to bring certain adventures to boot camp with the, some of our activities and stuff, but there's something about even getting away from boot camp to go out and do these things together. That's the continuation to me of the Band of Brothers. Um, Dwayne mentioned it earlier about the Band of Brothers, and I, got to, I was just sitting here kind of thinking about that. You think about the Band of Brothers if you've watched that series – and how they started out at boot camp and all they did, they did all this bonding, but then they went to war together. And there's one of the scenes near the end where they're, they're in Ardennes or whatever, and it's winter, and they're all talking about, they're sharing their different wounds with one another. And it's that intimacy where you know your brother's story and stuff. And it's cool when we have examples of people who have come to boot camp who have not just went away and been separate, but had keep in uh, contact with other brothers and that, you know, you're truly part of a band of brothers now. So it's cool. Right. And, and to me, Rodney's, you know, how cool is that? Because yep. you, you were there. Yeah. You know, what is this, maybe your 12th boot camp, Rodney? Hmm. I think <laughs> around 10. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. And so it seems like at every boot camp we pick up, you know, one or two more that get engaged. And I really, I can't even imagine my life without Rodney. Can you? No. Mm -mm. I mean, it, it, <laughs> we call him Ramrod for a reason. Yes. I mean, you know, he keeps, us straight. A, he keeps us straight in so many different ways because he is a zaddy. And I mean, he, he has that sense to him. And, and so as God brings you to boot camp that's listening right now, mm. you know, you've got a special set of gifts and stuff that only you bring to the party. And without, without Rodney, we don't get that stuff. Well, that's where you go, you go to boot camp. I, I didn't know what to expect. I heard you guys on the radio, and I'm like, well, I, I know that I'm not stepping up like a man like I should be. I'm not living the godly, manly life, and I need to engage more. And you guys talk a lot about engagement in many different ways and facets, which really intrigued me because it wasn't just you know, one constant drone. It's many, many facets. And you show up at boot camp, and you're like, okay, well, what do we do first? Oh, just come have dinner. <laughs> okay, just go have dinner, and then it's like, okay, we're we're gonna meet back here at this time to have this talk. Okay, and it was it was great because it was <clears throat> I had I didn't have to think about well what's coming and what's going on. I was just I could concentrate mm -hmm. on me and God, which is <clears throat> what I really needed, still do. But at least God got me to that point right. Like I'm there, and then you guys, you know, God working through you guys to constantly show that wow, there there's more to this than. Hey, just show up to some boot camp one time. <clears throat> I walked out of there going, "Oh, I I need to go back. I need mm -hmm. this needs to be a part of my continual walk with God." And because there, there's every boot camp, you're communing with God and you're getting more out of Him. I I just can't find time in my schedule to do this at home on my own. I just can't. I I, Not, I struggle. Plus, it, plus no. you don't get the campfire experience, right? <clears throat> so that no. first night, right? We no. have that talk, but often. 
you know, all that is nowhere near as cool as what happens at the Wayne wildfire experience, right, Ricky? So you've had some experiences at them bomb fires, right, Ricky? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had a big burden, a big burden I carried around for 32, 33 years. And uh, all the men gathered around and prayed. And the next morning, I felt like that probably uh, the whole, the, the, all the weight was gone. It's sort of unimaginable how how I felt, and it's been gone ever since. Amen. But you know, and what you don't know, Ricky, but I, I'm sure everybody feels. And, and if I'm not mistaken, Rob, were you at that? Were you at the boot camp? Your first boot camp when Ricky was there at the campfire and shared. Rob, are you still with us? Yeah. Sorry. Do you remember Ricky Sharon at the bonfire that first night? You that would have been the first your first boot camp, and there you are, and all of a sudden, boy, it was on. <laughs> Were you there that night? Yes. yes, I I I think so. I don't remember exactly what the story was, but um, I do remember. Um, him sharing um, something, yeah. Yeah, it was really, really heavy duty. And for those of us who were familiar with Ricky's story and were close to him that night, it, it, you know, it was something, when you get to see God do something huge right in front of your own eyes, you know, it impacts you for a lifetime. I mean, I will never, I know you'll never forget that night, Randy. Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll, you'll never, any, any of us that were there that night, you were there, Danny, um, we all were impacted by what God, and so was Jim, and so was Harold. So we, we all were. But you know who wasn't it? You. You're listening right now, and you're thinking, man, I haven't survived boot camp. We can fix that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you have to go to masculinejourneyradio.org and register. It's coming up the weekend before Thanksgiving. Oh, we'd love to see you. Oh, we would love to have your story to add to boot camp survivors. So go do that. And we got more coming in after hours. More of these guys. Stay tuned. This is the Truth Network.